Welcome to Artistic Adventures. Today we're going to be talking about processing alpaca fiber for doll wigs. I've had some requests for this, and since we have to make a wig with that doll wig cap I made in the last video, this will be appropriate. So I'm going to start with this alpaca fiber that I purchased from Alpaca Meadows. I've talked about them before. And this is alpaca locks as opposed to raw alpaca. And also this is the Suri fiber, not uh, the Huaca if I'm pronouncing that correctly. There are two types of alpacas. And this is what you want for doll hair. So the locks come already uh, somewhat cleaned and separated into these little, well, locks. And the raw fiber, when you get that, is, is more of a mass. There's some locks, some not, some just, you know, fiber, loose fiber. But they all have a little bit of this um, hay and straw and grass, dried grass in them. The locks have less because they've been cleaned a little bit. So I prefer to work with the locks. So what I want to do is take a bunch of these and attach them together. And this is me showing you that I do need an opposable thumb to put rubber band around anything. So I couldn't do it. So what we're going to do is uh, just tie this yarn around the top third or fourth of the uh, lock that I pulled out. And you're going to do all that you want to, if you're going to wash it, which I don't really need to wash this, it's already pretty clean. But if you've got raw fiber, you definitely want to go through this process. Just get some warm, soapy water, put the locks in it that are tied together like this, and make sure you tie them up near the top, uh, not right at the top, but sort of at the top fourth, I guess. Uh, and if you need to, you may have to let them soak if they're very dirty. This is a process where you'll also be able to pull out more of that straw and hay and grass. Then when you get it out of the rinse water, you want to pat it dry. You don't want to try to rub it. It'll just make it more tangled. And then you're going to probably have to let that dry overnight. That's what I do. But as I said, this particular fiber um, is not very dirty and it also doesn't have a lot of straw in it. Now you're going to get some waste when you start combing it. And I'm using just a pet uh, comber that I got at uh, one of the pet shops. For It's for dogs, I think. And then I start with the bottom. This is another time when I need my thumb, but I'm trying to hold it as best I can. You want to hold it really tight. And then you're going to uh, comb the bottom part. And you may need to turn it over and do each side and then do the rest part. So what I'm showing you now is how I usually use the fiber on a wig cap for a smaller doll. And this is a wig cap that I made uh, prior to this. And then I just put some of that E6000 on and then trim the end of the alpaca fiber so that it's even. And then I just press it down and glue it to the wig cap. And I do that all the way around. And I keep going until I get up to the crown of the doll. I have plenty of videos on making wigs. You can check out this process on one of them. But this is really about the alpaca fiber. I just wanted to let you know that uh, that is how I typically make the, the smaller doll. Now for this bigger doll, in the last video we made this wig cap. And this fiber that I'm working on now is going to be what I use for the wig cap. And that brings me to another way that you can prepare your fiber for making wigs. And some people do this for their small doll wigs as well. Um, and you can. You can do it either way. I'm just going to give you the options and show you how to do it. All right, so once again, we combed out a lock of the hair. Then I'm going to put down a piece of aluminum foil. And, that's, and also, for this, I'm going to typically use E6000. But I did find this Elmer's yesterday in Michael's. It's clear. It's washable, which uh, is one of the reasons I like E6000. Uh, regular Elmer's, you know, is water soluble, can be water soluble. So I'll, I'll put down a little bit of this. Uh, we're going to try this glue out and see how we like it. And I just put a line of that down because I want to try to make the top part where I glue it as even as possible. And I, I'm spreading the glue with my finger away from the long part of the hair so that I'm not spreading the glue down into the long, the longer part of the hair. So I've done several of these locks on the, on the um, aluminum foil. 
And what I do after they get, after I get them done, I go back in and make sure that I've got no straggling pieces on the edges because these wefts are going to be sewn in. I don't want to have any little stray pieces. I want them to be fairly tight together. And then I let them sit for about an hour after they got a little bit tacky. And then I pulled them off and turned them over. I do this so that they won't adhere too much to the aluminum foil. At this stage, they come off really easy. And then also by flipping them over, it allows the back part to dry quicker. This glue does not dry as quick as E6000, which, you know, it's good and bad. E6000 uh, can have some toxic parts to it, but um, this is supposed to be non-toxic. All right, after those have dried, what I'm going to do is trim off any uneven pieces so that it's a nice, I guess this is about maybe a fourth of an inch or I don't know, maybe even an eighth of an inch. Just want to make sure that I have enough glue to hold all the fiber together, but I want to have it trimmed so that when I sew it onto the wig cap, there's not a lot of the glued part to cause it to feel hard on the doll's scalp. Now, you, if you wanted to, even on the small dolls, as I said, you can use these webs. Some people prefer to do it this way. And then you would just put a line of glue along the edge and then glue the weft to it. That way, you're really doing two steps, whereas the way I, I normally do it, I just put the, the hair right on there and glue it, and that just cuts out one of the steps. So now that we have our wefts, we would go back to the doll and we would take the weft and sew it onto this wig cap with just regular needle and thread. And that's going to be in another video. I wanted to just keep this uh, video about processing the alpaca fiber and give you some options for different ways to use it in making wigs. So I hope that helped. This is um, some beautiful fiber and I look forward to attaching it to the wig cap, which we'll be doing in the next video. So stay tuned. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And as always, please subscribe so you don't miss a thing. Thanks and bye.